Welcome to another episode of Dad Up, everyone. Thank you guys very much for joining me. Uh, as always, uh, I am excited for the next guest I have on my show. Uh, he and I have gotten a chance to connect a little bit over social media, and now virtually we're meeting for the first time, but I'm really excited to hear about his story. Uh, not only is he a dad, but he's got a great story, and I just want to welcome my good friend, Justin Pickens, to Dad Up. Welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, Brian. Nice to meet you, finally. Um, I've been following you for a long time former Marine. I used to live in 29 Palms. I don't even know if you knew that or if you'd ever been stationed out there, but um, I'm I'm just delighted to be here. Awesome. Uh, well, first of all, uh, from one Marine to another, thank you very much for your service, brother. I do know where 29 well, I'll, Palms I'll, I'll is. I'll stop you. I didn't never served. I just lived in 29 Palms and that's a story. Oh. <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> you know, not very many people live in 29 Palms, California that aren't in the Marine Corps, but I happen to be one of the very few. <laughs> oh wow. Uh yeah, 29 Palms for anybody that doesn't know what 29 Palms it's it's like uh in the middle of the desert and if you blink you'll miss it when you drive by on the freeway. Uh so it's a that's it's actually kind of grown over the last 10 years or so. It's grown up pretty well, but uh yeah, it's pretty pretty small town. No, I would not want to live there. No, I wanted to get out of there as fast as I could as a kid. I did not enjoy the beauty of the mountains and Joshua Tree. Um, I just remember I was shooting hoops and I would play in goggles. I would play in swim goggles, shooting hoops, because there'd be these amazing sandstorms that would whip up. So did not appreciate the beauty as much when I was in middle school out there. Um, but now I can, and hopefully one day I'll go back out there soon. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, well, let's do this. Let's dive into a little bit of back history about you now that you're talking about you as a youth. Um for my listeners who may not know who you are, let's let's dive into a history of you, Justin, how you, how you grew up, uh, and then obviously we'll lead into what you do today and then uh, your, your family as well. Yeah, so I'm Justin Pickens. Um, I'm really just somebody that has a story and I like to tell it. So essentially, I was born into a family of two parents that both dropped out in the 10th grade. Um, my mom struggled. Um with sometimes uncontrollable bipolar disorder. Um, from the ages of a baby to about probably kindergarten, there isn't any family photos that we have um, because my mom was suffering from pretty extreme bipolar um, episodes where she would leave um, two, three weeks at a time. No one would know where she was at. Um, and then on the flip side of that, my dad was a very um, good man who struggled with addiction and temper. Um, so when you mix um, those two things together, I grew up heavily in a state of poverty 24 seven. Um, and when things were bad, when my dad was addicted to either alcohol, methamphetamine use, or my mom had bipolar flare ups, um, things could get pretty dark. Um, and there's times as a kid that I I have a bad memory for the most part. And I think a lot of that is psych psychologically building me a pretty thick, calloused heart and, you know, memory core to kind of um, get rid of some of those memories. But um, I did have some good things that I want to talk about, especially with my dad. So my dad um, has been in prison twice, the Missouri State uh, Penitentiary for methamphetamine use. Um, my mom actually, uh, when I was in high school, she spent some time in the uh, women's penitentiary in Rancho Cucamongo, um, California. But really my story is just about trials and tribulations and anybody who's ever met me, they always say, I cannot believe you turned out to be the person that you are. Um, and coming from me, it's not a surprise because there's a couple things that my parents did and I'll get more into it. But my dad and mom, even though they dropped out in the 10th grade, they did a couple things. Number one, my dad never used the word if you go to college. He always said the word when you go to college. And that was from an early, early age. Um, another thing, he prioritized education. I did not miss school. I did not miss sports practices. Um and there was no such thing as a sick day. Um, and whether you agree or disagree with that in today's modern age of parenting, for somebody coming from a really rough, impoverished, poor background, I needed um, that discipline and that encouragement as well. And then another thing um, that my dad did, even though he had a lot of 
temper issues and anger issues, he never, ever refused to play catch with me. Um, and he did, he didn't work anything but manual labor um, jobs as um, a chicken plant worker. But there wasn't one time I don't think I remember him, whether he was addicted to some sort of substance at the time or not. There wasn't one time he, he did. He did not play catch with me. So um, I can respect that fully. And that's just a little bit about how I grew up. There's a lot of story and backstory that we can get into um, within that. But that's just a little bit about how I grew up. All right. And what about, uh, what are you doing right now? What, what, what are you, uh, what's your career right now? So as I grew up, one of the reasons I am who I am today is because of teachers and coaches. So whenever I got to college, I didn't even think twice. I said, I want to make a difference. I want to be um, a father figure to those that don't have a dad. I want to be that good male role model in people's lives. And I want to continue to do what I'm used to. I want to teach and I want to coach. So for the past 13 years, um, I've been a social studies teacher and a physical education teacher, as well as a high school football coach, middle school basketball coach, and a middle school track coach for 13 years. And this will actually be the first time um, about a month ago I turned in my resignation um, and I'm leaving the, the education realm this year, which is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Um, I can get into it a little bit, but essentially, I've always felt like teaching was my calling, and that is until I had a family, and we have a two and a half year old, and then we have a daughter who's due in about a week or two, and uh, my wife feels this very strong calling to stay home with our young kids. She's an ICU nurse um, on the heart transplant floor. She deals with death a lot, and she wants to be home with our kids. And we started really looking at ways that I can support her wanting to stay at home. And God worked out a plan, put pass in my step for me to go pursue a career in um, financial advising. So essentially, I kept going through doors that God opened, even though every step of the way I fought him and I asked him to close doors. But this is going to be my last year in education, which... I feel like I am turning my back on my younger self. Um, and that's been just a big battle within me, um, knowing that I'm doing this for my family. But at the same time, I, I do feel like there's some kids out there that I'm not going to get to mentor and reach out to. So that's just a big internal struggle going on right now. Yeah. Um, how old is your son again? My son is two and a half. Um, he'll be three in July. So it's two years and nine months. He's in that best age. He has a personality. He's the funniest kid I know. And um, yeah, he he hurts me quite a bit. He's jumping on me. He tackles me about 40 times a day, but it's the best age I could have ever imagined. All right, cool. Um, well, we're going to get into all that, but I want to I want to back up a little bit because um, you you grew up in a in a rough home, home life. Um it sounds like you felt like there was love within the home uh, at times, um, but it also uh, seems like it was more of a struggle uh, in the things that you did and the thing in the way that you grew up. Um, when it comes to addiction, uh, I think that's important because addiction is passed, right? It's passed down to you know our kids, um, and that's something that I struggled with as well. Addiction. Um, I am now over 13 years sober from, from alcohol. And, you know, I like to say in the Marines, they teach you how to, they teach you three things. They teach you how to cuss. They teach you how to drink. They teach you how to fight. That's what they teach you. But, um, it, it is, it is, a, a I grew up in that type of household where my parents were alcoholics. Uh, and I knew, uh, very early on when my boys were younger that I didn't want to grow up. I didn't want them growing up in that type of household. Uh, and so um, people that watch my show or listen to my show know my story, but um, essentially addiction has, you know, it's translated into onto me and now I have to watch it and how it translates onto my boys. And that's why I stopped with alcohol um, for you uh, knowing that you're coming from a mom who has struggled with her issues, uh, mental health issues and bipolar and all that. And a dad who's had 
serious addiction problems. What is what has been the hardest part about not following or what has been the hardest part about staying out of that line of fire or staying out of that uh, that area as far as addiction goes and and those sorts of things? That's a great question, Brian. When I was young and the times where I was living with my dad, it was actually pretty easy to stay away from alcohol um, or drugs. And here's why. There were sometimes I had so much um, disdain for my father because of the way he treated us or how poor we were or that we could never get out of this rat race of this poverty cycle where I didn't want to be anything like him. Um, And it breaks my heart to say that, but he was my driving factor for why I wasn't going to drink alcohol and I wasn't going to do drugs because I wanted whatever he did. I wanted to do the exact opposite. Um, And he would be the first to tell you he passed away about 15 years ago from a sudden heart attack, but he would be the first to agree with you. Another reason I didn't dabble with any of that stuff is because he literally put the fear of God in me. Um, I was more scared of getting caught with alcohol or drugs in my hand from him and what he would do. I mean, he was a very scary man. So it was very easy to avoid um, alcohol up until the age of about 20. And that's when college hit. Um, And then I played college football at a small school. Um, You know, I did not take a sip of alcohol until I was 20 years old. Didn't take a sip. Um, And then things kind of unraveled a little bit. Um, and then they really started to unravel about, um, this is probably 10 years ago where I went to a doctor and when you grow up poor, you don't go to doctors regularly. Um, I always tell people, if you're watching this on YouTube, I might have a pretty good smile, but there were times I don't think I went to the dentist until I was about 16 years old. So, um, I finally went to a doctor and one of the things that he prescribed me was Adderall. Um, And I had no idea why he prescribed me Adderall, but it helped. I was actually going through a master's program so I could get building leadership. And the doctor prescribed me Adderall. He said, oh, you have adult attention deficit disorder. And I just assumed blindly that I had ADHD. So I started taking the pills. And this is when I just had gotten married and was a newlywed. And over the course of our marriage, the first couple of years, I became very irritable and angry and I didn't know why. Um, I was a horrible person to be around and I'll admit that. And I also started to drink without knowing um, that I was becoming alcoholic. And the reason for that is I married a saint. My wife um, had never drank alcohol before. She didn't want to drink alcohol. She still doesn't drink alcohol. So I felt like I had to hide it from her when I did. Um, So essentially, I started drinking um, vodka, warm vodka, when she wasn't looking or wasn't around. She was a night shift nurse. So there were nights where I would do that. And I was doing this with Adderall. And this is after I had grown up with a traumatic childhood. I didn't want anything to do with it. And it's a slippery slope. So I'm on Adderall, which the doctor prescribed me. So I think I need it. But I'm also um, taking, you know, drinking vodka dry. And that's really when you know you have a problem. It really wasn't until I was working on a second master's degree in physical education that I had to do an assignment. Um, This is by the grace of God. The assignment was over the effects of Adderall and over the effects of mixing it with alcohol. Because a lot of college, a lot of college kids do that. They take Adderall so they can party all night or focus And then they're also on Adderall. And then when I was doing this assignment, it was like high blood pressure. You know, your heart's beating all the time. You're angry, you're irritable. And um, it just hit me. It just hit me like, I've got to stop this. I immediately walked into my wife or up to my wife. And I said, I'm bawling, I'm crying. And I said, hey, I have a problem. I have to get off Adderall and I have to get off this. And I've been an alcoholic quietly for about a year and a half now. And I've been hiding it from you. And that was one of the biggest rushes and feelings of just this gush of letting everyone know that my secret was out. Because that was one of the hardest things is bottling up that secret and that addiction for so long. Hmm. Wow. Um, The 
fear that must have been going through you at that time in how she would respond or react to what you were telling her. Um, but uh, I'm proud of you for doing that. That's a huge step. You know, a lot of a lot of guys are afraid to admit their failures or admit the things that they've done that they, that they regret. Uh, and a lot of men are afraid to admit that, especially when it comes to raising kids. We don't want to admit, admit our mistakes to our kids because they'll see us as a failure. They'll see us as, as not uh, moral. And uh, for you to do that with your wife, especially being a newlywed, um, is very brave. So uh, I'm glad that you did that. Um, it's amazing, though, how God works. Mm hmm. <laughs> And giving you that assignment, you know, I was just talking to someone today about uh, the the lessons that we learn from God when we don't even know that we're learning them uh, and some, you know, struggles that this person was going through. And I said, you know, this is what you need to do. I gave, gave them some tips on what you need to do. And they were kind of, you know, shooing it off or not really arguing with me, but kind of shooing it off. Wasn't really... Um, taking much stock in it. And I said, um, I said, isn't it amazing that I came to you today and started talking to you about this? And why do you think that is? And this person was like, I don't know. That's a good, good question. I said, well, God works in these ways. You know, he used me obviously as a vessel. I had no idea I was coming into you to talk to you. And I had no idea that I was going to come into you and talk to you about a relationship with God. Where in the world did that come from? I came in to just say hi. And now mm -hmm. here we are talking about our, our relationship with God. So this isn't a, this isn't a uh, faith-based podcast, but I'm very, I'm very, um, I have a very good relationship with my heavenly father. So when I talk about this stuff on my show, it's to show people that, yeah, we go through these struggles in our lives as human beings and that's okay. Where we need to um, take stock in the things that we've done or haven't done is what have we learned from those mistakes? What did we learn from the things that we did or didn't do? Um, whether it's a parent, whether it's owning a business, whether it's struggling with addiction, whether it's growing up in a household that wasn't the best uh, as a kid, what did we learn from that? And then how do we move forward? That's those where the steps are, right? And I think that's what you did. That was the first step to you learning how to move forward was you coming forth and saying, I made a mistake. I've messed up and I'm acknowledging it that I'm not perfect because under the eyes of God, we are not perfect. We're going to make mistakes all the time, but I'm owning it now and I'm moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you telling your wife this, I hope that you find it in your heart to forgive me and help me move forward. That was kind of the conversation that I had with my wife. It was like, I've made this mistake in, I didn't think that I was an alcoholic, to be honest. I just didn't want my boys growing up in that atmosphere. I asked my son to get me a beer out of the fridge when he was 10 years old and realized, what are you doing? You're teaching your kids about alcohol by you telling them to go get you alcohol. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just bizarre. So I had to refocus and I told my wife, I need to do this and I need help and I need support. And she said, let's do it all on board. And it sounds like your wife did the same thing. So that's awesome. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I just went on a tirade of just stuff. And uh, I just, my whole point is just say, I'm proud of you. And that for people that are watching or listening to this, Listen, you might be struggling with something right now. You might be going through something right now. You might be failing at something right now and you need help. That's okay. Ask for help, whether it's your spouse, whether it's a friend that you can trust, whether it's your pastor, whether it's your parents, um, whatever it is, ask for the help because you'll be surprised at how many people out there will actually help you if you ask. If you don't ask, they don't know. And they won't help. But if you ask, you'll be surprised at how many people help you. So um, I'm glad that you went through that. I'm, 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 I'm glad that you went through that because it, it helped you to rediscover who you are and helped you to set a clear path to where you are today and the future going forward with a young son and one on the, and a daughter on the way. Right. Mm -hmm. So awesome, awesome stuff. Um, you talked a lot in, in sharing your story about your parents the good qualities 
especially when it comes from your dad. You know, he he was adamant about education and you sticking and going into school and they didn't graduate high school yet you're you're cold this is what you're going to do there's no ifs about it you're going to do this he had a clear expectation of you and he always made sure that he, it seemed he always made sure that he was present for you when you know you had activities going on or something you want to play catch or something that seems like uh he had the right mindset he just had some other issues he was working on as a, as a person and that's okay um, what kind of, other than that, what things did you learn from your parents? I like to ask my guests this question in particular, just because it really helps us understand um, how we evolve as parents. But uh, the things that you learned from your parents, um, either to do or not to do as a parent, um, what did they teach you about parenthood? Well, I'll start off with things not to do. So one of the things I don't believe my parents did a very good job of was self-care and taking care of themselves. And I, I know that that's a big buzzword nowadays, self-care, self-care, self-care. But um, I never saw my dad exercise. And as I said, you know, I know my dad worked manual labor jobs and was hard, but, you know, my dad suffered from a massive heart attack at 52. Um, and a lot of that's because a lot of life is stress, but I never saw my parents take care of themselves. Um, I never saw them specifically set aside money so they could take a, a a fitness class or set aside money so then they could pursue an interest or a hobby. Um, life was a simply about work and whatever the kids were doing and basically getting the bills paid. Um, so that's one of the negatives where um, I know that we want to build up this selfless society and I, I think that that's fully important, but I, I've always been told you can't fill others up from an empty cup. And I do feel like my parents did a terrible job of, and sorry, that's a harsh word, but I don't feel like they did a good job of filling themselves up with their own interests, hobbies, and, you know, spirituality was not something in our home whatsoever. Um, so that are some of the things that I would learn to do well. Um, some things though that, or some things they did well, though, um, outdoor time, you know, I grew up in Southern Missouri, um, as well as California, but we, we were poor, we didn't have video games, we had three channels on the TV, there wasn't a lot to do. So get outside, we would walk. Um, I lived on a property with two creeks and two streams. And it wasn't something that we had to be forced to do. It was just this is our life. We go outside and we live at a little bit slower of a pace. Um, I still remember at a time if we went and visited friends, my wife thinks I'm crazy, but my dad would just be like, all right, kids, we're going to go see what the Parsons are up to get in the car. We wouldn't call ahead. We wouldn't do it. And then we would just knock on their door and we'd end up hanging out in their front yard for like hours at a time. So we did live at a little simpler pace. Um, and that's a good thing that I learned. Yeah. Um, Gosh, you remind me like I grew up in a, in a, uh, I grew up in California, but I grew up in a little town in central California, um, little town called uh, Santa Margarita. And there was a thousand people in this town and maybe 800 when I was there. Uh, and there were two back then, this was the days where you had boys that were paper out boys, right? They throw the papers, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so it was me and my best friend were the only two guys in town that were the paper out boys. He had one side of town, I had the other. Uh, and it was just a simple, like you said, it was a simple life. We were outside all the time. My, my rule as a kid was we had to be home. I had to be home when the street lights came on. That's when I had to be home. Uh, the other rule is like your dad with education, my dad did not did not graduate high school either, but my dad, my dad did get his high school diploma, but he went through and got and did his GED stuff mm -hmm. after high school. But so he didn't graduate high school, but he was very adamant that I was going to school and I was going to get good grades and all that kind of stuff. He, the rule in our house was you, when you came home from school, you didn't go and hang out with your friends or play with your friends until your homework was done. That was the rule. And if that meant that it took me a couple hours to get my homework done and then the light, the street lights were on and I, and I was, I couldn't, that meant I couldn't go out that mm -hmm. night. Um, so that was just a rule that I grew up in, but it was a very simple life. We rode bikes. We were goofing off and, and being, being terrors on the train tracks. We were doing all kinds of crazy stuff. The creeks, 
we were playing army. I mean, we did all kinds of, of stuff in the, in, in my town, but uh, um, well, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad that, um, you know, that simple life taught you not only uh, the things that your dad was doing for you to show you his way of showing you love, right. Being present. Um, but also um, gave you a sense of uh, respect for the f- the simpler things, right? And now technology, all that's kind of taken away from from the simple things in in life. Our kids don't know that those kind of simple days. You know, my kids my kids didn't grow up going and riding their bikes through town. They were they were grew up with video games and mm-hmm. you know cell phones and all that other kind of stuff. So. Um, Well, that's good. I do say that when we grow up and and become parents ourselves, that we learn how to be parents from others around us, meaning our friends that are parents, right? Uh, Or our own personal experiences. And what we take from those, we use them in whether it's the way we're going to parent or or the way that we're not going to parent. And you talked about some of the things that you're going to do as a dad Uh, But you also talked about some of the things that you're not doing as a dad. So we learn those things from the experiences and then from our own personal experiences. And I think that uh, for me, it's very, very much the same. I've I've learned some things from my parents that taught me how to be a parent, whether it was what I'm not going to do or going to do. Um, And uh, one of those things was love. Um, My parents are still together to this day, over 50 years married uh, as they're, they're still together. Um, my, they were not involved in my life. Uh, they were blue collar workers. My dad just at 70, just retired last year at 70. Um, and they're blue collar workers their whole life. My dad worked as an engineer at a hospital. Um, and, uh, they couldn't be present at all the stuff that I did. I played sports. I did all these, they, I can count on one hand, how many sporting events or school activities that they actually came to open houses, all that kind of stuff. I don't fault them for that. They just had those, that difficult life of trying to bring money home for the family and they had to work. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just knew back then that when I became a dad, I wasn't going to be that way. I was going to find something that allowed me to be active and involved in my kids' lives. So those past experiences taught me how to be as a dad, as a, as a, uh, when I became a dad. Um, But my dad was very loving. Uh, he, there wasn't a day that I went by in my life that he didn't say, I love you. And I knew he meant it. Um, and um, those kind of things still, still get to me to this day because yes, my dad taught me that he wasn't the best dad in the world. He made a lot of mistakes, but the one thing that he taught me is how to love your kids. And that's one thing that I've done with my boys. When it comes to your son, he's two, two and a half. Um, and now you're going to have a daughter that's going to be coming any day now. Um, ha- what ways are you showing love to your son right now and to your daughter for that matter? Brian, I hug my son more than you would ever think a little kid could be hugged. And a big part of that is I think I can remember truly hugging my dad three times my entire life. I'm talking one of those big bear hugs. Um, you know, one story is I was living in 29 Palms, California. My dad had been in prison in Missouri. My mom had got a boyfriend um, who was a two-time felon, and he had been getting violent. And my dad had just got out of prison. He was on probation, and we knew we couldn't stick around anymore with my mom's current boyfriend, um, even though my mom and dad were still technically married. When you're poor, you're too poor to always finalize a divorce, if that makes sense. But I remember um, my dad said, don't tell anybody I'm coming. I'm on probation. I'm going to drive through the night. And he drove 20 hours to come pick us up in 29 Palms. And I remember I had a best friend named Doc. And I couldn't even tell my best friend Doc I was leaving. Um, Mm. Because it was, you know, my dad's on probation. He's a felon. And um, I just remember the plan was we were going to go to the bus stop. And at the bus stop, my dad was going to pick up me, my brother, and my sister. Well, um, my sister at the last second said she wasn't going to come. And that was the last time I saw her for seven years until my dad's funeral. But I remember getting in the car with my brother and my dad, and we made it about 10 hours. And I remember just thinking about leaving my friend doc. And I was just bawling, crying. And my dad pulled over on the side of the road 
And it's a hug I still remember today um, where it's one of those deep hugs. I could smell the musk on him, you know, the the um, scratchiness of his beard. And it was just one of those full hearted hugs that I that I want to give to my son every single day. So that's one of the things I'm doing every day. I look at my son and we have a thing. I go, you're smart, you're strong, you're kind and you're bright. Every day we do that two, three times a day. Because I want to put that into him that it's not a question if he's smart or not. He is smart. He is strong. He is kind and he is brave. Um, and every day I'll make sure I make sure to put this away and put it in a cabinet when I'm home. Because just like you said with alcohol, when the few times my son has had to tell me to put my phone away, it's hit me right in the heart and been devastating. So those are just a few things I, I do. I'm present. I'm around him. I say I love him all the time and I play the games he wants to play. And it doesn't matter how tired I am right now. I'm a teacher, a PE teacher. And I'm a coach and I am tired by the end of the day. But my son says, I want to go on a walk. And guess what? We go on a walk. Um, so those are just a few things I implement every day with him. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Um, gosh, I, I love the fact that you're using, that's a great story, by the way, about your dad. And, and, and I can tell I can tell it, that you still feel it to this day, just just by your body language and um, and the way that you shared it. I can tell you still feel it. So uh, that's a great story. Um, <clears throat> I love the fact that you're using those you know those affirmations with your son. Uh, it's so important, and and parents don't realize the the power behind affirmations. Um, it's crazy that you share that story because I used affirmations with my boys growing up their whole life. My older son, in particular. I used to tell him every single night when I tucked him in right before he went to sleep, I would say, Hey dude, you're a leader, you're a champion. And then his mm. response was, I'm the best in the world. That was his response. And that carried with him. I'm, I kid you not. He's 24. If I go in the house right now and I get him and I tell him to come out here and I say, Hey dude, you're a leader, you're a champion. He might roll his eyes because he's 24, but he, he knows that he, what to say, he knows I'm the best in the world. Um, I said that to him all the way through high school and it drove him nuts because he got to a point where he was older, you know, those teenage years. And it's like, okay, I get it, dad. I get it. I get it. That was the kind of response I would get, but it was just one of those things that I did with him over and over and over and over again, because I wanted to instill in him that you can do anything and be anything that you set your mind to nothing stops you. Nothing can stop you unless you don't believe it. And that's why I did it. A power of affirmations is incredible. Um, and I'm glad that you're doing with that. Keep it up. I'm telling you, keep it up. When he's 18 years old, keep doing it. He may tell you, knock it off. You're being goofy. That's silly. I'm, I'm 18 now, dad, just knock it off, but yeah, uh, keep doing it. Uh, and then, and then have something for your daughter, whatever that might be, have something for her. Um, but that's so awesome. I'm I, I'm happy to hear that you're doing that. Um, yeah. And a side note, something I remember my dad doing on the good side is we role played. So we talked about addictions and stuff like that. Any time in high school, I went out, my dad would, if my dad was around, he would force me to role play with him being offered a drink of beer. He would force me to role play being offered some weed or something like that. And I'd be like, dad, we don't have to do this again. And my dad was like, no, no, no. And he'd role play like he was a high schooler. He'd be like, hey, Justin, you want to be cool? And he'd overdo it. But it was just another way for me to role play and an affirmation of I'm going to say no. I'm going to do this when I'm faced with it. Um, and that stuck with me. So affirmations, role plays, you know, what, however corny some people may think they are, they're impactful and they're meaningful and they're lasting. Yeah. Uh, and affirmations are good for us too, as, as parents, the things that we say to ourselves as parents. Um, it's crazy to think though, that you talk about, um, you know, your parents and the struggles that you went through. It, it is, it's amazing to me that your dad was actually a pretty good dad because he knew he was a flawed person. He knew mm -hmm. he was stuck. And for whatever reason, whatever demons were holding him back, he couldn't break those chains but he'd be damned if he was going to let it happen to his kids. And so the way that he talked to you and interacted with you and the things that he said to you um, showed that he really wanted you 
to be okay. He didn't want you to be that guy that he was. A lot of guys, a lot of dads do grow up and go, you know, I hope my kids just like me or I hope my kids, you know, like, no, you want your kids to be better than you. That's what you want. That should be the end goal. Your kids should be better than you because you know what you and your kid, even though they're your, your, your blood, you're two different human beings. So why do you want the same person? You want somebody that's better than you. Uh, and that seems like that's what your dad was trying to tell you. Listen, I'm a, I'm a, I'm messing up. I don't know how to break this. But that doesn't mean you can't. Mm -hmm. so this is what you need to do. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, and look where you are. So uh, awesome stuff, man. Awesome. Um, what? How's your wife feeling? I and mean, what challenges are you guys going through right now with, you know, a young one that's, that's like you said, uh, I think you said it before we were starting recording. You guys are wrestling all the time and roughhousing and all that stuff. And then, and now you've got your wife's uh, about to have another one. Yeah, so some challenges right now. It's it's a fun time to be in the Pickens household, but you know my wife is eight and a half months pregnant. She's really starting to get into the oh I'm pregnant stage. Like I need my feet rubbed every night. Which husbands go be a servant. She doesn't have to be eight and a half months pregnant for you to rub her feet. You know, do it at any time. But we're in that stage, and then at the same time, um, since I've decided to transition careers. Um, I've been on LinkedIn for about four months and all these opportunities, including this podcast, have come about since I've been on LinkedIn that I've never had because I'd never heard of it really before the last four months. So I've been uh, teaching my full time job, coaching, applying for the financial firm I'll be working for. And then on the side, I've been connected with some great guys, Alex Dimchek, who I actually heard about on the John Gordon podcast. Um, that we talked about earlier, but um, I got connected with this company called Streamline Books and I've been working for them part time. So I'm being pulled in about four directions right now. Um, you know, family, Streamline Books, um, teaching, coaching, and it's it's wearing on me. But God keeps giving me the energy to do the things I'm doing like this podcast right now, because I think he wants he there's a plan out of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, life in the Pickens household is crazy and fun and we're going to make it. And it's almost like whenever our daughter comes and I accidentally said the name the other day. So I'm going to be very careful not to say it or my wife will just, you know, roast me. Yeah, but, do um, I'm not going to do it. But um, things are running a million miles an hour. I'm almost looking forward to that screeching halt of life here in about a week or two where it's just me, my wife, my family. Um, and that's it. And I shut off the phones. I shut off the devices and it's just us in our home for a good solid week. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. You, you take me back. Cause I got, you know, like I told you, I, my boys are 24 and 21. Uh, I can, I can still remember those days like yesterday. Don't blink Justin, cause it will go by so fast, but I want to tell you something because you brought this up yourself and I want to make sure that you sharing this yourself, you're actually doing it. Because you talked about being pulled in a lot of different directions and a lot of dads face that struggle. Listen, we think that we have to carry everything ourselves. We feel like we're the, the provider for the family. We're the protector for the family. We have to be there for our kids. We think we have to do all those things. And then we forget about ourselves. Self-care. You mentioned it earlier in the show. Self-care is so important because like you said, if you're tank is empty. When your wife is holding the new baby and she is exhausted and needs you to take her and your tank's empty and you can't, that is not going to be a good thing. So mm -hmm. you need to make sure you're taking care of yourself too. Yes, I understand. You've got a million things on your plate because you've got a lot of things in the future you're trying to strive for. Plus you have a new baby on the way. A lot of things are happening at once but you need to learn to take a step back and go, okay, what does Justin need right now in order for me to be 100% checked in for everything else? You mentioned it, Justin. I'm only saying what you said earlier. You need to make sure you're taking care of yourself so that way you can take care of everybody else or everything else. So I want you to practice what you preach. <laughs> Thank you for that reminder. Um, you know, you hit the nail on the head. I am being pulled in a lot of different directions. The biggest thing for me 
when I know I'm being pulled too much is when I'm not spiritually set. Um, and I'll be honest, the last few days I've been so busy. Oh, I got to, I got to get this, um, ready for track, or I've got to get this LinkedIn post ready, or I've got to do this where my mind starts putting other things before my spiritual time in the mornings. And I've, I'm wise enough to know that that's my red flag and I need to slow down. Um, I'm also unwise enough to sometimes push when I don't need to push. So this right here is the reminder I need um, that it's time to take care of myself so I can fill my family up even more so than I'm doing um, right now. But you're a hundred percent right. Yeah. Um, yes, because you will, you will, uh, you'll start to, you'll start to break down. Uh, you'll start to, neglect things. And that thing could be your son. You know what I mean? That thing could be your wife when she needs you most. That thing could be the financial services business that you're trying to get into. Um, that thing could be a relationship with your heavenly father. Um, more importantly, that thing could be your own body breaking down and essentially dying on the inside out. Right. So mm -hmm. make sure you're taking care of yourself, man. Um, let's do this before I let you go. Um, if my listeners wanted to look you up, learn a little bit more about you, best place for them to do that. Oh man, Brian, I'm probably one of the few, uh, people you've had on the podcast. I don't have a ton of followers, you know, just go look me up on LinkedIn. Um, Justin Pickens. I have been posting stories after stories. You can go to my featured post to find out more about me. Um, writing has been fair, very, um, refreshing to me and telling my story through writing. So look me up on LinkedIn, Justin Pickens, connect with me. I'll make sure, um, that we can chat sometime if you ever want to hear more about my story. Oh, that's awesome. Well, listen, Justin, I appreciate you. I appreciate the dad you are. I appreciate the husband you are. I appreciate the person that you are because you've learned a lot in your life and it's led you to where you are today. And the fact that we connected was not by accident right? There is a reason by, uh, behind us connecting uh, on LinkedIn. That's where we connected on LinkedIn. And when I started reading and learning more about you and watching your stories, your posts on LinkedIn, I started realizing um, th the character behind the, the person that's sitting on the screen right now, uh, a really genuine guy and a really genuine person to other people. And the way that you share your stories is, is just phenomenal. Um, and that's why I wanted to have you on, uh, because I saw who you are as a dad. I saw who you are as a person. And I knew that this is the kind of person that I want to have on my show to spread the message of being a parent and to spread the message of hope to dads that may be struggling or at a loss or, or just confused on where they need to be next to really level up not only their life, but their dad life. Right. So um, I'm grateful for uh, our connection and I'm grateful that you took the time to, uh, to chat with me today. Uh, I'm excited for uh, your future, my friend, and, and I'll be continuing to, uh, to pray for you and, and your family and uh, your wife and, and the new baby and all that goes well. You need to keep me informed on how that goes. But uh, by the time this show comes out, he'll have two uh, kids. So, um, so yeah, so I'm excited for that. So thank you again, Justin, for being on the show, brother. I really appreciate it. Okay. Um, if you're listening to the podcast this much, since this show is going to come after, I'm going to tell you the name now. Our son's name is Whit Pickens and our daughter's name is Gentry Pickens. So a little bit of that, but I'm safe now that this show is for sure going to come out after she's born. So I've done it. Oh man. I hope your wife doesn't get mad at me. Um, yeah, this show, this show will be out. Well, at least let's hope this show comes out after it. it'll be a couple of weeks. So, uh, hopefully that's the time. Uh, if, if, if I tell you the show is going to air and everybody's watching this, but if I tell you the show is going to air and, uh, and you haven't had the baby yet, you have to tell, tell me to hold off. <laughs> no problem. This will be a great learning, uh, thing for all the other dads out there. If I do blow it. So, I mean, I am excited about the name, so I wanted to get out there. All right, cool. Uh, well, you made a funny post the other day about the name that you said you were gonna you were gonna have for the uh, for the baby. Uh, would you care oh, to share? Oh yeah, it? Harrison Harrison Butker Kicker Pickens because uh, Harrison Butker worked from KC, Kansas City, and he's our hometown hero. And I was like, well, I just got to name my daughter Harrison Butker Kicker Pickens now. So. 
<laughs> yeah, I was cracking up when I saw that. Uh, well, cool. Well, thank you again for being on, brother. I really appreciate it. And listen, everybody, uh, if you haven't checked out uh, anything about Justin Pigs, don't know who he is, go to LinkedIn. You can see all the stuff that he's doing there. Um, he's a great dude. So make sure you guys uh, check it out. And also you can reach out to him if you want to chat or learn more about him. He's very responsive on LinkedIn. So make sure you guys do that. And as always, if you have not yet subscribed to my show, please make sure you do that because the show comes out each and every week and I have phenomenal guests on just like Justin each and every week. So I hope that you guys subscribe so that way you are reminded that the show has published. So as always, until the next episode, I look forward to seeing you all on Dad Up. Wow, another amazing episode in the books. So much was shared and I'm truly grateful my guest was able to pour into you to help you elevate your dad game and really dad up. Make sure you bang that subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode. And while you're here, please don't forget to leave me a rating and a review. I always appreciate the feedback. And one last thing, don't forget, your role as a dad is one of the most important roles you have. So if you need a little help or have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me on my website at daduptribe.com or at my Instagram page at daduppodcast. Until next time, everyone, Data. up.